Do you think that Jack Antonoff has a house? Brunch! Hit it, boys! We spoke. He listened. Verizon's chief marketing officer is leaving the company after eight years on the job. Let's give it up for him. Good Ab- idea. Absolutely demolished by shame from yeah. the brunch podcast. Yeah, we never even ended up. I never ended up finishing the social clip. We had a big week last week on the uh, on the socials. Check the various ones. I learned we had a TikTok even, uh, but uh, I didn't even finish making the clip of the Verizon thing he he must have just heard the pod raw dog and was like not to brag i'm getting cooked (laughs) yeah he uh he must have got wind that uh you know how like when when a scandal's about to break and like somebody who's at the at the center of it hears that they're working on an article Mm. he heard that you were working on on that clip in premiere and he was like i gotta get out of here on a social fled to mexico (laughs) the social clip essentially was pete saying verizon on an unforgivable run (laughs) Of ads, the last, and then I'm me saying, and it's always with ex SNL people. And you said, oh, well, no, not Paul Giamatti. And I correctly pointed out that he's hosted before. Correct. And uh, then I was going to toss in some not to brag stuff, but quite frankly, uh, I thought we had better moments in last week's episode. It was a really good one. So I uh, never got around to that one, but we did enough damage to uh, say goodbye to the great. Uh, hypnotic review that's speaking the wrong of, wrong thing uh <laughs> speaking of damage um you uh you made friends with a lot of taylor swift fans this week oh incredible i mean i, I we'll get back to verizon don't okay. worry about it remind us uh listeners uh i did we put out a clip of the thing we we did something that i want to start doing which is a, a scripted social clip and uh, if you listen to last week's episode We came up with the idea on the fly that we should... This episode's a tribute episode to other episodes, by the way. Uh, We came up with the idea to do a a social clip. It's a clip show, except that we're uh, we're not playing the original clips. We're doing covers. Yeah, just making them. Uh, We We should do that as a clip show. Of things that never happened? No, like like a clip show. Like, you know how like when sitcoms do clip shows? Yeah. We should do that, but instead of going back and actually pulling the clips, we just reenact them in real time. Instead of... Oh, I like that idea. Yeah. I've thought about do, uh, doing some sort of like freshened up rerun of like, hey, let's go back and redo an episode, but it would involve making a script and remembering anything. Mm-hmm. I truly would involve do. work, which we're not about. Yeah. And I also... I really don't remember any episode unless it was one of the more recent ones like yeah. i like off the top of my head i remember uh i remember wine actually which is funny that should be one of two episodes that we don't remember that and beer oh, evan but, hansen oh yeah well i don't remember beer evan hansen and beer I, evan hansen we were way drunk i was than, so drunk yeah beer evan hansen after we kept the party going and we're just like slamming beers by ourselves at, uh, yeah, at uh, uh, Tony C's. Tony C's. We were watching a horrible football game. I believe the Philadelphia Eagles were involved. And I remember Dallas getting, Cowboys. And I kept betting and like, yes, throwing money we at it. So much money. We and did there was this bets. guy on a date there that was like, excuse me, can't help it over here. What are you guys doing? And <laughs> I, I was don't like, remember that at all. Oh, uh, Philadelphia coming back. Right. And he's like. I mean, like, I'm on a date, and I'm just barely paying attention to this game. I don't think so. What a time. I, I don't remember that at all. The only thing that I remember from that that conversation uh, is we, like, devolved into, like, a lot of suicide talk. No, no like, yeah, we got, it eventually got to a, uh, like, real heavy yeah. place. And that, that was, was, like, when you learned that I was suicidal. Yeah, no, that was, a, like, an exploratory uh, mental health conversation where you were, like, now... You're like a mental health guy. You know when blank. You know when you and think about like, suicide all the time and you're like. Mm. I was like real talk. Like that's something that uh, I've dealt with before, but uh, not with any regularity in a long time. And it, that's I don't think that what you're talking about is a, oh, everybody has it. They just don't talk about it. I think a lot of people do have it, unfortunately. Yeah. But I was like the thing that you're talking about. Learned, yeah. I don't identify with. So maybe. It has like, a term. Check that suicidal out. Suicidal ideation. Yeah. So yeah. 
It is kind of weird, not to get really crazy, that I've kind of been out of that game for so long. What, suicide? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, truly. Like, it's it's not on the table uh, for me at all. Not to brag, the Verizon guy is just a top of mind. Um, but y- y- yeah, like, uh, obviously, we all have our mental health stuff and everything uh, like that. But that was always kind of part of my cocktail, gr- like, just growing up from... From when I was in like middle school to uh, maybe like my mid to late twenties, and you, you you never know like how things go and everything. But that true, I, I I can safely say that's kind of been uh, off my plate for ever. So yeah, it's dude, good. That night when you brought that up, yeah. I was like, I, it was just good for both of us to. It was good for me to hear it from you, just so I could be like, dude. Uh, it, it was not good regular. For, it was definitely good for me to to get like a hey, that's like a, not a normal thing. I just thought it was like on the table for everybody all the time. And you probably felt betrayed. You were yeah, like, what was, the fuck? Like, you're the mental. You're health the weird guy. one. Yeah. Okay, man. The, the dynamic shift that we've experienced over the past two years, in like first four years of the podcast, you're always like the one like explaining mental health stuff to me, and like I still need stuff explained to me and laid out to me, but like very clear that. Yeah, there was there was uh, maybe some stuff that should have been addressed way earlier. Like with anything, talk to people. Yeah, Ab- about anything. Just have conversations with people about it. Not not to say share your deepest darkest secrets with people that you don't know, but I don't know. Like I I, I can't think of much that is best served. Uh, a lot of tweets, I suppose. But I would say like I can't think of much that is best served. Uh, bottled up and shoved down. That's why a lot why of I, tweets. I, a lot of tweets. Right. You know. You know the old meme. Uh, we should all know less about each other. Yeah. There's that's never been truer in human history. This shirt usually looks good on me. Maybe it's just because I've been going crazy on carbs the last couple of weeks. But this looks terrible on me. I'm gonna be buttoning and unbuttoning stuff and just trying different looks with this because I look fucking horrible right now. This is the Maybe. beauty of now prioritizing video. Yeah fucking i don't know i look a little better now but jesus christ uh anyway uh so uh mr diego scotty has uh said goodbye i'm gonna do one more button back up uh oh, verizon that's... chief marketing officer he's stepping down after eight years he uh says uh he'll step down after near after nearly nine years on the roll uh wall street journal changing its story on the fly according to people with direct knowledge of the matter mr scotty told several contacts in recent days that he'd be leaving the wireless carrier but didn't indicate if he'd be moving to another job they said respect diego been there for sure where you're just like yo uh this has got to end this is gonna end and oh can't wait to hear what's next shut the fuck up about what's next He's probably, just ending. He, he's probably walking around the office being like, not to brag, I got something else lined up. Right. And everyone's like, fuck, where are all our good ideas going to come from? <laughs> That's because, because, you know, famously, the chief marketing officer writes the commercials. They definitely don't hire anybody. Correct. I do hold yeah. this guy responsible for all that, though. I mean, it goes all the way to the top. Yeah. Uh, quote, after eight years as our chief marketing officer, Diego Scotti has announced... His plans to leave Verizon to focus on building a new chapter in his career and explore new challenges. And while we're sorry to see him leave the V team, original name for this podcast, (laughs) we wish him the best in the future. Read an internal memo sent to staff this morning by Hans Vestberg, chief executive of Verizon. Well, we hope the V team can dig themselves out of this. Uh, Tired. Um, Scotty doesn't know. Yeah. Wired. Scotty doesn't brag. Yes, that's there right. There you go. Uh, so that's the uh, sad, but I don't know, maybe optimistic end of Diego Scotty's uh, treasured time in Verizon. It's a big part of this podcast because if you've listened to the podcast the last uh, seven to eight days, you know that that's a, a big story for us. Uh, yeah, on the Taylor Swift thing. So we put out the clip uh, mocking Swifties and how they add up everything and everything turns into 13 in 1989, 22, blah, 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 blah. And all of the comments, it did, what, did it do okay on uh, I mean, your, your Instagram? Own, your, yeah, Instagram did pretty pretty okay. Um, Twitter, your, maybe? Your, what? Twitter, not a ton? Uh, Twitter, I mean, yeah, like Twitter and Instagram were fine. It really popped off on it your was own TikTok. personal. It was TikTok. Your own personal TikTok, yeah. Right, which 
I didn't. I searched for brunch on TikTok to make sure. I was like, we don't have a TikTok. Let me see. What did you search for? No, I have no idea. And it, because, it had to have been listen to brunch. But then when I did it later that day, it came up for both brunch and listen to brunch. You probably spelled something wrong. Maybe. While searching listen to brunch because the display name is brunch and the uh, handle is listen to brunch. I also have like, it says friends, but I have like six friends on uh, TikTok. So I don't know how it didn't come up when I hit literally any letter. I don't understand like how the TikTok f- like f- format or like user interface works. Yeah, it's, it's very confusing. And to had me. you posted on the brunch TikTok yet? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, what uh, I I posted after like because one, like w- how it works on TikTok is you post something and then it immediately pops up with like something that your friend posted. I posted the brunch thing and oh. it immediately popped up with you posting the same clip. And I was like, Jeez. what the fuck? You didn't let me know. But, uh, I mean, good way to let the listeners know that we are on TikTok. We have, like, four followers. Yeah. Uh, so this has uh, 641,000 views on TikTok. Does it really? And the comments, whoa, 1,316. She always knows. Comments. <laughs> and uh, all of the comments, I thought it was going to... I started getting more followers and everything, and they all had uh, Taylor in the profile picture. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? And all of the comments are like, OMG, literally me tagging friends and stuff. People separate like, oh my God, bestie knows. And I'm like, oh, not bestie. What the hell is this? So I, let me see. I've, I picked up, uh, I picked up not a ton. No, like a t- I like doubled my what Instagram fo- or my uh, uh, TikTok followers, which I had no TikTok listeners, followers. Let me know if I'm allowed to be mad at, at DJ about, being a little selfish and posting a brunch bu- brunch clip on his own personal TikTok before giving the podcast account first dibs. Yes. Especially when we're trying to grow the TikTok. I mean, if that isn't DJ social media in a nutshell, the one time uh, he benefits from social media is when he fucks up. Like The, the only way I can ever grow my own social media <laughs> is by fucking up and posting something that yeah. should be on to, our social media to be fair at the same time like I'm, I'm a little torn on it because like it was your idea to do that clip you put together that clip you wrote most of the taylor stuff like it was it was like a 90 no, they, you know, it was that, like that a 98 like, you thing if it's a B, if it's a beatles song you'd be like oh that's a dj that's a paul song You're like, right that that, that, w- that was a dj song but uh that doesn't mean that it was th- that that's way more a brunch clip than it is a dj clip though yeah yeah for sure it's just, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm gl- it, It's beneficial either way. I'm glad that it did well. Rising tide. Right. Yeah. Uh, sinks all seas. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So I, I started to write one today. I had like one free minute and a thought where I started to write a social clip that would be Pete centric. And we ended up being short on time. So we probably won't be able to knock it out today unless we have a thing like in last week's episode where we just decide to do it in the middle. But I for sure want to have more of those where yeah, it's just like a scripted thing. And, uh, and those are becoming more prevalent. That's, that's for sure not a um, an original idea. But yeah, all the, the comments. Let me see some of them. Uh, uh, this is 100% how we sound from a Swifty. So true. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is generally what I sound like. This is me. Uh, she's a freaking genius. But my favorite one is somebody wrote 1975 plus 13 equals 1989. And I responded, okay, FR though. Like, for real. <laughs> yeah. And then it's there's a bunch of responses to that, which is a mix of like, holy shit, yes. And like, <laughs> wait, what's going on here? That doesn't equal uh, 1989. But yeah, so that's uh, the little uh, social media update. Good luck to Verizon. Good luck to Taylor Swift. She's in town uh, this weekend. Yeah, in, I am not. I'm famously fleeing. I my I used to do this with uh, what's the famously Irish holiday St Patrick's Day, mm-hmm. Boston. I used to get out of town that weekend if I really? could. Usually the Bruin because of Bruin stuff, I'd have to be around for at least part of it. But I used to love the opportunity to be like, I will go nowhere near <laughs> Boston. Else. I feel like yo people. I was wrong about 
this tour. I think I'd have to check. I told everybody when everyone was freaking out about the ticket sales. Yeah, they have I not was come like, down. just wait. They'll come down. That's what we did with uh, with them the last time. We got like awesome seats in Atlanta like a month before the show. I I was giving away tickets the last her her last tour when she was at, at Gillette. And this time it's just not stopping. The the Taylor train is really why, going crazy. Why is it that? Is it because she just hasn't had a big tour in like a few years? I think because Midnight's so, was maybe. not good. We can admit that now, right? Like, Midnight's was fine. No, it it's but Midnight's is standard Antonoff Taylor fare, which is like this is okay. There was even a video. Uh, I was gonna be real uh, jerk, but I wasn't. There was a video of a guy in his studio that was like wanted to make it to the Taylor Swift concert tonight, but uh, couldn't afford tickets, so I'll just play one of her songs. And he did like a loop cover of um, "Anti Hero," mm-hmm. and he did it all on the fly, very nice, very tasteful. And he was just looping two measures of music, and then just kept building on it, and was able to do the whole song. And everyone was like, this is unbelievable. I'm like, this is cool on this guy's part. But if you can loop two measures of music and never have to change anything the whole time and do an entire song, maybe that song's not the smartest thing in the world. But I don't know. Work smarter, not harder. That's right. Uh, I don't know if it's smarter. On the Antonoff note, uh, there was a picture that did surface this week of Taylor and Maddie Healy out at like some restaurant or something. Ooh, watch mm, the spicy food. <laughs> Sizzling fajitas yeah. to that table. Don't burn your mouths. Uh, no, there was a picture of them and not more than five feet away was one Jack Antonoff. He's just like their pet. He's always around. It's just any picture of like any celebrity, Jack Antonoff's five feet away. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to make it to the Taylor Swift concert this week i have been seeing like clips and the whole thing looks fun taylor did get a lot of praise the other day though because she yelled at uh, a security guard yeah that poor fucking guy yeah he's never to be seen again he did you know that they they escorted him out the security guard yeah oh wow did you you see the story who who, uh escorts a security guard Ooh, i don't know um god Did you not see the clip though? No, she's singing "Bad Blood." I mean, I saw I saw part of it. I saw like a, a piece of it in um, KFC's One Minute Man video. Ah, uh, right, where she's like, "Hey, stop!" Yeah. She's not doing anything. She's just having fun. I'm like, Ugh, pander more, Taylor. <laughs> nah, for real. Uh, do you so- think that? Uh, do you think that Jack Antonoff has a house? He strikes me as a guy who is just a professional couch surfer oh. and just goes around and like has sleepovers with all his friends, like like uh, on tour. I mean, the records he produces sound like sleepovers with friends. Maybe have a little less soda pop and have some coffee. They just, yeah, they just drink some Mountain Dew and focus on the. Yeah, there's like a TV on in the background. <laughs> you can hear it. N- not not polished stuff. Uh, I do think I, I want to say uh, that maybe even in like the fun days, I think he was maybe still living at home. I could be making that up, but. Uh, I know. That oh, I remember you talking about like. A, oh, yeah, right. He, he didn't did exhibit. Like, he, yeah, he did like a. Um, oh, yeah, he didn't exhibit like in a museum. And he was like, here's my bedroom. This is where I live. This is where I made like the bleachers record yeah. or something. Oh, the worst. That guy sucks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sure, he's a nice guy, but fuck him. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's just certainly not a genius, but uh, gene is a thing that you put on your pants sometimes. That's true. And you know who makes some comfortable jeans? Mm. Not Muggsy Bogues, but the company Muggsy. They make the most comfortable jeans, but not only just jeans. They've got chinos, joggers, uh, plenty of other stuff that you put on your pants and, I mean, on your legs and can be called pants. They're made from buttery, soft, patented stretch materials that look stylish but are insanely comfortable. Uh, And of all the things that are getting worse in 2023, pants are not one of them. Yeah. Pants are definitely not one of them because jeans, jeans are, I think, like, on the way out, but the jeans that are sticking around are way more comfortable than we've come to know from like my childhood. Um, I mean, I've I've become a 
as close to a permanent pants guy as possible. I'm almost all, completely off the shorts. It's crazy. And I'm mostly doing big, jeans. Your big, uh, your big selling point was your legs for the longest time. That is true. People really... I, I mean, I still... I, I I still give the thighs to those who need them, but generally I uh, for 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 the public, come on, these are panted. You're a philanthropist. That's right. You just give out legs to those who need them. He's uh, giving legs. <laughs> uh, Mugsy jeans are frankly the best thing to happen to legs since chairs. Uh, never in human history have legs been so spoiled by pure softness and comfort while looking so damn good. The guys at Muggsy have one mission in life. Give every man the confidence to walk blindly into their closet, reach out, and know whatever they pick. They're going to look good, and they're going to feel even better. Uh, we have some Muggsy jeans on the way. It says oh, yeah. here to provide a personal testimonial about the style and comfort of Muggsy. We can't yet because we're waiting for our stuff. But word of mouth is popping. Th- word of mouth amongst the wash guys are just like n- never have I been so excited to get a text saying, "Hey, uh, blank is on board. They're gonna they're gonna yes. do some ads." We got the text from Brett uh, about a week ago saying, "Hey, Muggsy wants to 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 support the show," and I jumped out of out of my chair and was like. I've been waiting for this because I want those jeans. I want the joggers. Uh, I'm a big, basically a 100% jogger guy at this point in time. But uh, Muggsy's summer hits, uh, the Cool Max just dropped. Cool Max denim are like air conditioners for your legs. They spend years in the lab developing the most breathable jeans ever, designed with lightweight fibers to ensure a cool breeze with every single step. They come in enough colors to make a pack of crayons jealous. Damn, that's a bar in this in yeah. this read. Uh, Good copy. <laughs> the great copy. These are the only jeans that Diego you'll wear Scotty this summer. Could never. <laughs> only jeans that you'll wear this summer. Uh, go from the backyard barbecue to the bar in one swift motion all summer long. Not to brag. Uh, head to Muggsy Jeans. Dot, uh, head, head to Muggsy dot com and get 10 percent off using promo code brunch that's 10 percent off some of the most premium jeans chinos swimwear and shorts on the internet mugsy also offers free shipping and return so there's absolutely no risk to give them a spin and if you're in the chicago or austin texas area make sure to head downtown to check out their storefront as well easy vibes every time enjoy a beer as you shop also if you're in boston or dc we're in Boston. Keep an eye out for a Muggsy store coming June 2023. That's Man. next month. That's in like two weeks. We should do an event. Let's let's reach out to the Muggsy guys. Set that up. Uh, again, that's Muggsy.com, M-U-G-S-Y.com for 10% off for if you use promo code BRUNCH. Yeah, I, I learned this recently. Do you know what kind of uh, overalls Mario wears? No. Denim, denim, denim. And I'd also uh, heard this. Do you know what uh, the Pink Panther said upon stepping on an insect? Dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant. And everyone said, everyone said, Pink Panther, what is, what's happened? He said, I stepped on that ant. Had you heard either of those things? I have not, no. I just heard them recently. A, uh, a big week for... <laughs> Uh, for Ben Affleck, because uh, not only does he have a new film, Hypnotica, we'll talk about that uh, briefly, but a I'm already starting to see it. A congratulations to the second life of Air, because Air oh, yeah. has hit streaming, and I'm starting to see that the menu situation where everyone's like, hey, I am telling you, watch this movie Air. And I like that, because it happened with the menu, and... Uh, Air is even a good movie, so that's sweet. The menu is not bad. I, I like yeah, the yeah. menu. No, I, this this one's way more understandable though because we said it after seeing it in theaters, like, oh, this is a great streaming movie, super streamable, a great TV movie. And I've I'm, like, I've even practiced it even before hearing that from you. I saw that Air hit. Uh, what is it? Prime Video. Prime Video. Prime Video. Uh, as soon as I saw that it hit that, I I instantly handed out a bunch of recommendations. Like, hey, have you seen Air? You should watch that. It's on Prime Video. Nice. Because it's just like, it's no it, nobody's going to dislike that movie. It goes down super easy. Yeah. Want to thank the uh, nice folks from Air. Uh, I'm in my, I'm in my mailer era. 
been getting a lot of 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 mailers of of late and they sent me a plant a potted plant inside of a basketball which i meant to ask is there some plant connection in that movie no okay that's what i thought well no I was like, like wondering, does maybe like Phil Knight have was, a bunch I was of wonder, plants I was wondering in his if office? he had them in his office. I but I thought his that. thing was just like bare feet. Yeah, bare feet and running. Yes, running and having a Porsche. Pur- purple Porsche. Yeah, they were not able to send that. But they did also send the shades, which was pretty sweet. Yeah, I'm a little jealous. I, uh, I'm i jealous that, number one, why are you getting mailers? I have like... 20 times the, the better followers. bang for your buck if <laughs> yeah. they're sending them to you yeah um, you're you're still a lot of shine here i recently. think uh, i i think that's good though like I, I think so i i'll say this truly i'm never like how come pete has more followers than me yeah. like i think that pete should have more followers than me he's better at social media i agree but we do enough stuff together that we also will do a lot of things in person with people and when we're in person, I don't feel the like uh, DJ's not pulling his weight no, or whatever no, or no. anything. Also, I think that you're better at schmoozing and doing favors. Right. Yes. So like if if we're doing a thing, uh, I'll shake the hands and yeah. I'll kiss the babies. And, and as long as people know, <laughs> like you can blast out the tweets and then but because we've done things before with people where I've been like, uh, OK, and. Uh, Pete Blackburn will be there, and the person will be like, sweet. And I'll be like, he has 900 million Twitter followers. And then they'll respond and be like, holy fuck, <laughs> Pete's cool. And then like they meet you, and they're like, yeah, Pete's cool. Whereas, I don't know, if somebody who's not on social media and they don't get that heads up, they'll just be like, oh, these are two people, and they seem nice. It's good when where we are a good team, because when we meet people together, they're like, we – know what we can get out of each of these people. And the fact that they like doing stuff together seems like a win for us. Our strengths align. Yeah, definitely. In terms of, like, making sure all bases are covered. So, Air, Affleck, have you watched it yet? Affleck? Have you streamed? Air, again? Yeah. No. I haven't either. I've I've had too much hockey. I've had, uh, what what have I been watching? Uh... Oh, I'm back on Nathan for you Weird. because I saw somebody tweeted a thing that was like, I don't know who this man is, but he's ridiculous. And it was Nathan setting up Nathan Fielder setting up the thing of uh, I'm going to get out of these handcuffs because if I don't, I'm going to expose myself to children. It's the best and it's best bit. Yeah. So I've been <laughs> watching bit. that of late. Uh, Barry has jumped into the future and I'm loving these episodes of Barry succession. I'm. Kind of ready for it to end, but I liked this past episode. And I've liked all the episodes, but I also am ready for it to end. And in, in, in like, not in a like, all right, let's get to the the finish here. But like, they're doing so good at building up to the finale that I'm like, oh damn, okay, I'm I'm ready to see what happens. I think it makes sense dramaturgically. Yes, for sure. For for it to end. Uh, but the thing that we both did watch this week, and we're not going to do a full fledged movie review with the music and the graphics and everything because. Uh, I don't know. It just feels wrong to break down this movie. Uh, the the new Robert Rodriguez film titled uh, Hypnotic, for which we saw the trailer maybe a month or two ago, being like, "Hey, there's another Affleck movie coming out." He's yeah. bad. Is feel, feeling like I remember we said uh, feels like '97, right? Because Affleck's doing a bunch of movies. This and is also Rod, Robert Rodriguez is in the news. Yeah, it feels like '97. Why has he been uh, quiet? Yeah, I think so. Like, what was the last big Robert Rodriguez vehicle? Let's see. I feel like he's lost quite a bit of steam. Robert Rodriguez vehicles. Uh, the thing is with these things, if you just Google a director, uh, it'll, it'll have like a bunch of things on which they're a producer hits. or oh, whatever. That, yeah, no. And you'll be like, yo, they didn't do whatever. Uh, like the book of Boba Fett. Boba Fett? Boba Fett, yeah. Executive producer. Yeah, let's see. Where what's the last thing he directed? Yeah, I'm not. It's been uh, a while. You are right. Uh, but this is a movie. We saw the trailer. We discussed it. It's Tra- uh, trailer looked bad. Looked but. awesome. Yeah, <laughs> you were you were on the on the side of it looked awesome just because 
Ben Affleck and our boy Bill Fickner. Yes. And it, there's not a single thing that you could put Affleck and Fickner in that you wouldn't be automatically like, I am in. They were calling me at the movie theater. They were calling me uh, Bill Fister. You know why? No. Because I was pumping my fist mm, yeah. at a lot of points during the movie. You mm. sat next to me. You actually did. did see that I was pumping my fist. I was did a couple of like... Because there are a few moments in this movie where... To the untrained eye, it might seem stupid. <laughs> this is a movie in which Ben Affleck plays a cop whose daughter... Detective. Don't be disrespectful. A detective whose daughter has been uh, detected by a kidnapper. The kidnapper said, uh, victim detected, let's get her. Yes. Takes that kid away from Affleck, and Affleck is trying to figure out, where's my daughter? Where is this chick? And he's trying to figure out all these things. Meanwhile, there's a guy played by a Canadian actor, William Fickner, who is going up to people, saying stuff to them, and getting them to do crazy things. Famously in the trailer, he says to a woman, it's hot out, it's like a furnace. She gets up, says, it's so hot, it's like a furnace, begins to disrobe, walks into traffic, causes a fire, does all this stuff while a bank heist happens. And you're saying to yourself, William Fickner, hold on a minute. How did you do that? He is using uh, hypnotic techniques. Now, he's not. it's not hypnosis, they tell you. Mm -hmm. they, they only tell you once. I did get the feeling when they said it's not hypnosis that I was like, oh, we're going to hear this a lot during the movie. Nope, just that Better not time. be in the bathroom during that part. <laughs> it's not hypnosis. There are these people called hypnotics that can get you to do things based on incorrect realities they create. Is that a way of putting it? Correct. Yeah. Like think about like Inception. They mm. like create a world that doesn't actually exist and they make you do whatever they want based off of that. Right. It's a it's like a combination between Inception and I know you're not a Star Wars guy, but there's this thing called the, the Book of Boba Fett. Correct. That is a Star Wars thing. Uh, there is maybe that's where Robert Rodriguez got the idea for this movie <laughs> because this movie is literally just Jedi mind tricks. Oh, really? Yeah. Like Jedi mind tricks. They just... If they want you to do something, they just wait. If, you, if they're a Jedi, they just wave their hand and they say, like, you will open this door. Whoa. And then the other person's like, I'm going to open the door. Ah, so that, that's, that's what this movie is. That's exactly what happens in this movie. So people can get people to do other stuff. But uh, this is an important part of the movie. Um, the rules are there ain't no rules. Yeah, man. Because not only they, so they tell you, they're like, all right, this is we can get you to do things by saying stuff. And you're like. Plausibly, that makes sense. There's some uh, scientific reason that might happen or whatever. But then there's like shape shifting and like yeah. morphing and stuff turns yeah. into other stuff. And they don't explain any of it. There's, None of it is. They give you a, a very cursory explanation of like the idea of hypnotics, but there's no explaining anything beyond that. And I did figure it out later, though. It's just that you, the viewer, are seeing or the person in the scenario is seeing that it's just a different reality Correct. so they'll be holding uh so for example there are scissors on the table mm -hmm. and then a second later there's scissors in his hands and he's like how did this happen and it's just like the reality changed a little bit yeah but they don't like explain how really that that happens like th there there is a big overarching energy to this movie that just conveys don't worry about trust it. trust us trust us it's cool, and it makes sense. So there are... I did get some uh, notes of... It, it, it was giving rad bro at points, where I was like, just like, this is like... Like, I want to call Feidelberg and put him on speaker during it and being like, hey, are you at this movie right now? Affleck is... There's like a car blew up, and Affleck is pissed. And I feel like that's the type of thing where Feidelberg would be like, yeah. It did seem like it wanted to be a movie that was like in the early aughts. Yeah, like those that Colin kind, Farrell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like it, it had like phone booth energy to it, mm. but not in a... Not in a like a tasteful, throwback, enjoyable way. It's just like, my brother, you haven't grown up. You're living in the early aughts, and you're making stupid movies. Yeah. I mean, the stupidest thing about the movie, if I may spoil it, you can skip ahead in like 15 seconds. Listen, if we spoil this movie, you can't be mad at us. We're doing you a fucking favor. You no. can save your time with this movie. I mean, it is like I, it is a, I, it's very it, bad. It is it's a, a very bad movie. 
It is a horrible movie. Yeah, it's a, it is a horrible movie. It's a very bad movie, and even though I am having my fun with it because it's like a we, mystery-ish thing involving Ben Affleck and William Fickner. Think about how much we love Ben yeah. Affleck and William Fickner. Think about how bad this movie has to be for us to come sit here and tell you don't watch it. It's a waste of your time. This movie sucks. I, I looked on Letterboxd. I have rated exactly 100 movies, and six of them have come in. Congratulations on, on uh, making the, the V team. Thank you. Uh, six of them have come in under two stars. This one is one and a half stars. Deep Water. And Deep Water is another one that came in, I think, either one or one and a half or two. Uh, but two of Ben Affleck's latest movies have been like two of the worst movies that I've seen in five, six years. That's how I like my Affleck. Bad movies and great movies. Nothing in between. I don't like me a mediocre Affleck movie. I like I like my Affleck to make me feel. Yeah, but like he now, especially with him doing like the production company where like he's like really saving his bullets and yeah. doing the stuff that he wants to do. I uh I sorry. I want um we're so good at meetings, I'm getting calls from my agent mm. right now. Um no, like I, I want him to only do good stuff now. Yeah. I, I'm I'm past needing bad bad Affleck. And shout out to our guy, we love him. We've got enough bad Affleck that if we ever need to dip into and get some bad Affleck, we can get uh, get. We it. can play the, the hits. <laughs> the spoiler I'm going to give is there's this big search for the daughter. Where is the daughter? Mm -hmm. Where has she been? Everyone's looking for her, and she's just with her grandparents. Dude, and they in, they <laughs> introduced those characters in the last five minutes of the movie. Yeah. So here's here's the weird thing in this movie. If you've seen the trailer. Everything that you've seen in the trailer happens in the first like eight minutes of the movie. Every single portion of that of that trailer it comes from like the same scene, and it's in the first eight minutes. Uh, then there's a bunch of bullshit, and then they get to like the big conclusion, and they introduce new characters in the final five minutes, and there there are stakes, but the stakes never feel big because. They can just make shit up whenever exactly. they want. You're like, this can just not be real. This can just not be real. Okay, like, it's not real. Yeah, like the entire time you're just like, well, I, I I can't like be invested in this because it could just all be hooey. And it most of it is. Most of it's hooey. RogerEbert.com's uh, Roger Simon Abrams gives this a uh, two and a half stars. I am... That's too many stars. Not familiar enough I don't know with what the scale is. <laughs> to know the scale, but uh, the, uh, the, the, the first graph is, or the lead, I should say, is there's a lot of empty space in Hypnotic, a doofy, though never boring <laughs> sci-fi thriller about a Texas cop played by Ben Affleck who stumbles upon a conspiracy of mind-controlling crooks, or he seems to stumble upon them. Yeah, that's just about like, it. Get, that's, gets doofy in there. Yeah, it gets. It's not boring, or so you think. Yeah, right. It's not boring. It's not boring. It, it, never checked out. And honestly, like it kind of moves at too fast a pace at times. Yeah, it's a brisk movie. It's very brisk, and they just like there's always shit happening, and it feels kind of like Ozark in that regard. And that was like one of my complaints about Ozark was that like you can't really like let shit breathe. Yeah, and. Uh, it's a bad movie. It's a mess. Uh, we'll never want to see it again. Um, it is also not only a bad movie, it is a absolute flop. It's the worst opening for Ben Affleck and Robert Rodriguez in their respective careers. Wow. We didn't know that. Yeah. And apparently, uh, so Hollywood reporter, here's like the subhead on this. Uh, the sci-fi thriller suffered a major setback on the road to the big screen when the U.S. distributor and production company Solstice Studios closed up shop. This movie was so bad that it, uh. <laughs> that it ruined a distributor and a production company, which probably a blessing in disguise because yeah. the less people, the fewer people that see this movie, the better. So it was just never going to be good. Uh, got one last thing on movies. Uh, our guy Martin Scorsese. Damn, two point four million dollar opening on a sixty five million dollar budget. I was gonna say sixty five million dollars is a lot for this movie, right? I, I mean, a lot of graphics, a lot of. Is there though? 
But I mean, I, mean, I, I feel like graphics and stuff. and stuff probably are cheap. Like I can do that stuff. There's, there is action. I wonder if they use like practical effects and stuff. I don't mm. know, but it, it's a bad movie. Uh, you see this quote from uh, Martin Scorsese? No. Deadline. You're 80. You still have that fire to get right back behind the camera and get the next one going? Scorsese. Got to. Got to. Yeah. I wish I could take a break for eight weeks and make a film at the same time. The whole world has opened up to me, but it's too late. It's too late. Deadline. What do you mean by that? Scorsese. I'm old. I read stuff. I see things. I want to tell stories, and there's no more time. Kurosawa, when he got his Oscar, when George Lucas and Steven Spielberg gave it to him, he said, I'm only now beginning to see the possibility of what cinema could be, and it's too late. He was 83. At the time, I said, what does he mean? Now I know what he means. Imagine, I used That's to experience really this uh, with uh, with uh, the hockey player David Krejci, where you could ask him absolutely any question in the world, and if he had something he felt like saying, that was going to be his answer. Yeah. Uh, the, the famous example, famous, uh, is uh, I asked him something about uh, after a game, uh, he, he said, like, this stick sucks. And I was like, what? And he was like, my stick sucks. I was like, your stick sucks? And he was like, yes. They said they were going to send me the stick that I use, but they said that they're all out. They're sending so-and-so his sticks, and I don't have my sticks. It's like, what? I, I, I'm a sponsor. Like, I, I have a deal with these people, so I can't use other sticks. <laughs> and I was like, all right, David Krejci on game. I my I don't like sucks. my hockey <laughs> stick right now. I think he like scored two goals in that game. That's uh, amazing. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, the quick side note. I'm I'm so mad that all of wei.com's like content has been wiped out. Yeah. My entire writing career just doesn't exist anymore. And there was some real fun stuff in there. Uh, anyway, that's Martin Scorsese being like, I'm dying. I wonder what question this is going to be. Like, hey, isn't movies aren't movies great? I yes I agree I mean, there, until I die. There's a tie there, like he's saying, like aren't movies great? Like isn't cinema in a good place? He's like, yeah. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be around. Yeah, that's uh, that's a bummer. That that really that really bums me out. That I like, do agree with the crux of that though. Uh, in that one of I remember it was like maybe I was 28 or 29 or something like that, and I thought that I I've, I've felt washed. For a number of in a number of ways, and still young in a number of ways for a while. And I remember in my late twenties, I thought that more or less I'd kind of seen as much as I'm gonna see or learn as much as I'm gonna learn. And I had an experience that just made me feel really uh, like not in like a bad or harmful way, but just like made me feel like fucking dumb and stupid. And just be like, oh, wait, like I did not understand this situation at all. And it actually put me on a pretty good stretch of like, yeah, man, like you are not done learning stuff. You're not done finding stuff or being humbled. I think that as you get older, you could be like, shit, like. I'm gonna. I am what I am, and I'm. I've learned everything that I'm gonna learn. Like this is a guy that's saying like, "Fuck!" Like I. I still am learning, and like I'm seeing so much stuff. Like that's a great perspective to have. Being like, "But I'm gonna be dead soon" is a sad way to end the quote, but yeah. it's a good thought. No, it is, and like I think it's true. Like even if you know, even if things feel stale, like the 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 world around you changes. Yeah, and it's never gonna be as. St- I mean, we, we can encounter stasis in a lot of different ways, but it's never going to stay as stagnant as you think. Right. And like you, as long as you're open to learning and open to being like, okay, I see that this is being done differently. I will learn this like, or like I have an interest in learning this. You're going to be, you're going to be in a good position to do so. Uh, you know, it's, it, it bums me out that like somebody that's like a big fear of mine is to like, see the end and be like, I only have this much time. Oh yeah. To, to like, to do so many things. Cause you're never going to do everything that you want. And like, even like for Scorsese to feel that way, like one of the most accomplished people in his field ever to be like, fuck, there's so much more that I could do. And there's so much more. 
And like, I'm sure that he looks back on things that he's done and been like, if I just had like this perspective or like this experience that I could do things differently and I could make it better, that's ah, that kind of like kills me that you that people that's unavoidable. Yeah, but I mean, it doesn't sound like reg- it doesn't sound like regret to me. I don't it, it, think. No, no, it, no, not from that quote. It's more like regret that he doesn't have more time. Yeah, but, but like I- when I think about things, and I'm like, ah, shit, man. If I just had like this perspective, if I was just like in a different place with this opportunity that I had. Oh yeah, definitely could have been so much better, and I could have got so much more out of it. I'm generally pretty good at that, though, about like understanding, like, oh, this thing could have happened but then thinking about like okay well why didn't yeah, it there's and value why in wouldn't that it have worked and this thing that maybe would be cool for you now that you could have done a few years ago that you're like you know what just the timing wasn't right that's going to happen all the time with people yeah, there's with there's value in recognizing with it for sure. jobs and stuff i remember i was talking to a uh co-worker at the time that was like hey how come uh you like I always thought that you would do this sort of thing. And it was something that could have happened that I didn't do because uh, a couple of things weren't right. And I was, I I was just, I had no regret in thinking about it. It's weird. I like Scorsese's perspective there. Last thing I want to do, and uh, I'm going to toss a playlist up on the Patreon, patreon.com slash listen to brunch. I'm very grateful that my allergies were terrible last night and I my allergies have been very bad my, for like the last so two weeks. bad and I like if ever there were a time that I just needed to stay inside and like just hold my face and listen to hockey in the background because I can't even look up at the screen it was last night but uh the band the new pornographers were in town and I went against how my body felt and w- feel so great and so happy that I did that because they put on an awesome show. If you don't listen to them, uh, if you're not familiar with their work, get familiar. I'm going to toss a playlist up, but I want to shout out them and uh, their great drummer, Joe Siders, because uh, I wasn't going to go, wasn't planning on going. And uh, on on Twitter the other day, he was just like, hey, go to this show. And I was like, fuck, maybe I will. And I'm really glad that I did. Uh we have the dead coming up soon. We do have the dead coming up on my birthday, no less. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking forward to that. So that's going to rock. Everybody, uh, have a great week. Get on the Patreon, patreon.com slash listen to brunch. Wear jeans. Bye-bye.